Hi, my name is Amelia Lee and I'm the architect behind Undercover Architect. Today we're going to look at Ausbuild's Ellison 31 and some simple modifications that I believe you can make to this floor plan to create a much more functional and practical home for a family. Most of these modifications do not require any uh, adjustment to the external building envelope unless I've notified otherwise. First we're going to look at the lower floor. Now, one of the changes that I propose here is that you rotate the living room furniture by 90 degrees and put the TV on this wall. In the Ausbuild plan, the TV is located here and the wall is actually along this line. And they have the furniture so that there's a lounge here looking at the TV and then another lounge here. The lounge here is pulled off the door so that you can get in behind it because really it'll be a large piece of furniture because you'll be wanting to relax there to look at the TV and so it means that you'll actually you won't be able to put it up against the glazing. What I'm proposing here instead is that if you rotate at 90 degrees and you put the TV on this wall you then adjust the windows on this wall to be able to put a TV unit there or wall mount a TV. So you could have a high slot window depending on where you want to locate your TV um, that could have a sill of say 1600 uh, and a head height of 2100 or even adjust it up even higher depending on what the other glazing's doing um, so the TV sits below it or you could have some vertical slots either side that still allow you to put a TV unit between them. Uh, this means that you can then put your main sofa over this side looking directly at the TV and you can put another sofa on this wall and some smaller chairs closer up against the glazing or you could put an L-shaped so sofa through here. What this actually does is creates a room with the furniture oriented to the TV and it still gives you good circulation behind. Now if these doors open from this side and these doors open from this side you would still be able to get good circulation from your kitchen and your hallway out to your outdoor entertaining area into the garden beyond and not worry about the fact that you're trying to get your way around a sofa. By reorienting the furniture this way and your TV on this wall, it does a few things. It gives us the opportunity to be able to watch the TV from the kitchen space. I always think it's handy because it means that you can do a couple of things at once. You can be cooking dinner whilst watching the news or keeping an eye on what your kids are watching on TV. You can be up at late night doing what you need to do in the kitchen and catch up on your programs as you need to. And by reorienting the furniture this way, it also gives us the opportunity to push this wall across a little bit, make this room slightly narrower. As I said, the Ausbuild wall was down on this line. And what I've done here is give 300 millimetres depth of storage that's accessed by these spaces. Now, 300 millimetres depth is the depth of a bookshelf. So it will let you sit uh, an A4 folder, you can sit a lot of equipment, you can put school bags, homework folders, um, your swim gear, all of those kinds of bits and pieces, any work paraphernalia. What this area does is it gives you a what I like to call a homecoming dumping ground. So you arrive home in your car or through the front door and you've got somewhere that you can put your stuff that's out of the way um, that doesn't require you coming into the kitchen and putting it down there. So mail, your bags, the kids bags, all those types of things. If you wanted to completely privatise it you could look at adding a cavity slider door there to close it off. But ideally it just means that there's a space that's out of the way that can be a, a messy zone for organising all of those bits and pieces. It also gives this 300 millimetres depth of extra storage in your laundry space which I think is super handy for keeping things like your cleaning equipment and that kind of stuff that you don't necessarily want um, in your kitchen and able to be accessed by little hands. You can keep it up high, you can also put other bits and pieces of messy shoes, gum boots, those kinds of things in there. The stuff that you know um, is always better stored in your laundry. So that's what I would recommend definitely to do with that space and I've not done that um, with modifying the external building envelope at all. You can see those walls are exactly where they were. I've just changed some windows and shifted that wall and added some extra joinery. What I propose with the garage is that if possible you try and your lot width permits that you change the external walls. Now this will require some modification of the external building external building envelope, ideally by pushing it out to the side or alternatively you could push it forward if your street setback allows for it. This garage at the moment really would only accommodate two cars and not much else and so this space here or if you push the front line forward you get it at the back here would give you the space to put um, bikes, tools, um, all those bits and pieces that are good for keeping in a garage and you could either put some cupboards in or you could put some shelving and hooks up or even just have it as additional space. It just gives you that functionality 
uh, to get some extra storage into your garage space for all those bits and pieces that you don't want to just have lying around in the garden or inside the house. The other amendment I would propose making to this room is to add some double cavity sliding doors to this theatre space. This theatre room is really, uh, it's an additional bedroom for guests uh, or it's a study. It's not really a significantly sized living space, um, but it could function perfectly well as a home office or as a, a kid's playroom with lots of toys or as somewhere where the kids go to watch their computer games, play their computer games and watch their movies. The ability for that to function really well will rely a lot on you being able to provide some acoustic privacy and some visual privacy. So these doors, if you uh, can imagine, you'd be able to then close them off, not worry about people coming in and what they can see in through these doors or what they can hear. And it'll just give that space much needed extra functionality. And that's the lower floor plan and the modifications I would propose that you make to the Ellison 31. Next, we'll look at the upper floor.